Good day, everyone. Welcome back. Did you remember what we learned last week? In the last week, we will learn how to efficiently gather valuable information while listening, and took a first look at how to link these pieces of information together. I'm sure that you have gained a wealth of knowledge through that time. As you can see, listening is the foundation for understanding and communication. But for primary learners, it may be difficult for you to find the major and minor points in the material and how to recognize the semantic content of listening material. You may often meet a situation like this: you try to understand the whole content while listening. However, the more you try to capture everything, the easier it is for key information to be overlooked. Maybe you are going through the same problem, but do not worry about that. Today's lesson must be useful for you. We are here today to talk about an exotic and important skill in English listening: predictive skill. And I also invited another friend to join us. Hi, Xinran. Hi, I'm Xinran. Nice to meet you here. When it comes to learning to listen. Actually, I used to have the same problem during my beginner listening period, but after I gradually developed my predictive skill and tried to use some relevant strategies, it usually helped me a lot with my English learning. It's a powerful tool that can help you understand what you are hearing. However, how to exactly describe the predictive ability? It means that while you're listening, you need to use clues from the context and what you already. Know how to guess what you might hear next. Imagine you are about to watch a movie. You might see a trailer first, right? It gives you a sneak peek of what's going to happen. In listening, predictive ability works in a similar way. Exactly. Before you start listening, take a moment to get the clues from the material view. You can try to find key clues from title or some frequently repeated words if they have. In fact, they may all hide information relevant to the topic. And don't forget to use what you already know. If you are listening to a conversation about something you are familiar with, like sports or food, you can make some educated guesses about the words and the ideas that might come up. Think of it as being a detective. You are piecing together information to figure out the bigger picture. However, how can we develop the predictive ability and apply it into listening activities? First, keep your mind focused. Instead of just letting words wash over you, you are actively thinking about what comes next. This keeps your mind engaged and help you remember the information. Next, before starting a listening activity, remember to highlight the keywords. These words can be rapidly appear in the material or the title of the listening material. These keywords can help you predict what will happen next. Once you have identified these words during the listening process, you are not afraid of the unfamiliar words. This is because you have already guessed the main points of the passage and be ready for it. Finally, always keep confident. If you make mistakes during the listening activity, don't be disappointed about yourself. After class, you can discuss the answer with your peers and ask them for relevant tips. Discussing with peers and getting feedback from them will not only help you progress in your future listening study, but also enhance your speaking skills. Doesn't it? So let's sign up. Instead of just listening, start practicing. Use the clues from the context and your own knowledge to make good guesses about what you might hear less. It's a skill that can truly level up your English listening ability. Activity one: Listen and fill the blanks. The listening will repeat you two times. During the first time, focus on getting the general idea of the context and try to correct some keywords. The second time will provide you enough time to answer. Good evening. Welcome to our restaurant. 
How many people are in your party? There are four of us. Excellent. Please follow me to your table. Here are your menus. Can I get you something to drink while you look it over? Yes, we'd like a plate of appetizer and some glasses of water, please. Of course, I will bring the wine over. Let me know if you have any questions about the menu. Thank you. Good evening, welcome to our restaurant. How many people are in your party? There are four of us. Excellent, please follow me to your table. Here are your menus. Can I get you something to drink while you look it over? Yes, we'd like a plate of appetizer and some glasses of water, please. Of course, I will bring the wine over. Let me know if you have any questions about the menu. Thank you. Activity 2. Listen and choose the corresponding answer. The listening material will repeat it two times. During the first listening, focus on getting the general idea of the context and try to collect some keywords. The second time will provide you enough time to answer. Please note that you can only choose one option for each question. Hi everyone! Today, we are going to explore American dining culture together. In the United States, having a meal is not just about feeding your stomach. It is also an important way to socialize and gather with family. In the United States, people often sit together, sharing food and stories. Families gather around the table, exchanging their daily experience. It is a moment to strengthen family bonds. Additionally, Americans have a center table manner. For example, it is important to maintain a graceful demeanor while eating, avoiding loud and disruptive behavior. Another crucial point is that if you need to leave the table, it is best to ask for permission. So remember, Dining culture is not just about eating, but also a means of communication and showing respect. We hope that in your future gathering, you will enjoy a wonderful moment. Hi everyone! Today, we are going to explore American dining culture together. In the United States, having a meal is not just about feeding your stomach. It is also an important way to socialize and gather with family. In the United States, people often sit together, sharing food and stories. Families gather around the table, exchanging their daily experience. It is a moment to strengthen family bonds. Additionally, Americans have a center table manner. For example, it is important to maintain a graceful demeanor while eating, avoiding loud and disruptive behavior. Another crucial point is that if you need to leave the table, it is best to ask for permission. So remember, dining culture is not just about eating, but also a means of communication and showing respect. We hope that in your future gathering, you will enjoy a wonderful moment. Have you found the answers to this question? Don't forget to download the corresponding answer. After today's learning, I'm confident that you have gained a lot of understanding and how to apply it into your listening practice. If you feel like you didn't do as you hoped, do not worry. This is just a chance to test the things out and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your ability. After class, you can also share what you have learned with your peers. Just as a Chinese saying, if three work together, one can be my teacher, doesn't it? All in all, thank you for your attendance today. See you next time.